The governorship election in Imo State is one of the eight out-of-season or staggered elections across Nigeria, all of them a product of judicial interventions at one point or the other. The forthcoming race for governor in the state is already been shaped by the influence of the obedient movement, which derives its energy from the wide acceptance across the southeast geopolitical zone of Peter Obi, who was Labour Party's presidential candidate during the last elections. We are now being joined by Chinedu Amadi, a certified geologist who is aspiring to run for governor on the platform of Labour Party in Imo State. As we begin to explore how much of a propelling force the obedient movement has become, not just in the state, but across the entire Southeast geopolitical region. How that might come to play in the coming governorship election, as well as share his views on the challenges facing governance in Imo State. Good morning, Achinedu Amadi. Good to have you join us. Good morning. Um, thank you for having me on your studio today. All right, thank you very much. Okay, so let's dive into it. You are interested in becoming the governor of Imo State. You would like to unseat an incumbent governor. Um, how sure is it for you as an aspirant uh, who will be running um, against a few other gladiators uh, in the forthcoming primaries uh, of the Labour Party? How ready are you and what are your chances of picking the ticket of the Labour Party uh, for the forthcoming governorship election in November? Good morning once more. Uh, good morning to my dear people of Imo State, Ndimo, Ndewonu. Uh, before I start answering your question, uh, permit me to observe a mini silence uh, for all the souls that have been lost in Imo State due to insecurity and also the soul of one of the uh, aspirants um, on the race with us, um, Barrister Humphrey Animodu. May the souls of all the innocent right. departed, okay. rest in perfect peace. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I'm running for governor of Imo State under the platform of Labour Party. And this is because uh, Labour Party has become the party that the true aspirants, those that want the good dividends of democracy, true governance, to get to the people of Imo have assembled as same there. Uh, you know Imo State and the time past is known for its peace, a city of realization, a once vibrant city. But you and I know today that Imo State has lost all that. Imo is now a land of terror. In the Southeast, it is the capital of everything called fear, debt, worry, insecurity. That is what Imo State is known for now. In fact, when you tell people that you're going to Imo State from any part of Nigeria, they look at you with pity in their voice and they only wish you a safe stay. You are not assured of your stay when you go to Imo State. And this is very disheartening since the incumbent came into power. We cannot list the number of youth that their life have been cut short. I can tell you on record, in the space of two weeks, December 16th, December 31st, we lost two youth right in my community due to insecurity. And today we can't even find who the assailants are. Um, this has made a lot of emolites to stay away from home. Last Christmas, our people traveled from all over the world and they stayed in Lagos and Abuja. They stayed in hotels, the videos were circulating. They couldn't come back home to their homeland. 
the people of Imo State cannot wait for someone who will give them a reassured governance, someone who will secure their mandate. We know how the incumbent came to power, and the people have never been happy with the way their mandate was taken away from them. Now, there's a new hope in them, for them through my aspiration. I know there are a lot of uh, aspirants under the Labour Party coming to aspire to be governor of Imo State. And uh, with due respect to all the aspirants, what we are looking for right now is someone who has the competence, who has the character, who has the technical know-how, who, in the equation of things, for fair play, for equity, that is the right candidate to take Imo to the promised land. Okay. Our dignity has been lost. And I am, and I know that I'm the candidate that will take Imo State to that promised land once the party ticket is given to me under the platform of Labour Party. All right, then. I mean, thank we, you. Thank you so much for, uh, for that response. I mean, we do know that APC is the ruling party in the state. And according to the current governor, um, Hope Uzadima, the state, he believes the state is on the march to economic greatness. Now, I want to know what the unique selling point uh, you know, of, Elf, of Liberal Party would be that would help in unseating the current administration, of course, as it, um, as it uh, appeals to you in particular. What exactly uh, is the strategy that you are working on to make sure that you can win the people of Imo State over uh, for the forthcoming gubernatorial elections? Um, it is um, funny for the incumbent to be claiming that uh, the state is enjoying some economic vibrancy. It is on record that when it comes to negative KPIs, Imo is championing the entire Southeast and in some areas, the entire Nigeria. We have the highest, the worst unemployment rate on record in Nigeria, about 56%, above the average. Our teaming youth can't find a place to get their hands to work. We have on record the highest early childhood mortality rate in Imo State, going up to 35 to 96 percent. What it says is that if you're zero to five years, your chance of a survivor is very low, very low in Imo State. Um, we have the highest, the lowest uh, life expectancy, uh, the average life expectancy in Imo State currently is about 53 years for you to, to, to sustain life in Imo State, where the average is 56 years in Nigeria. So you look at a state that every Monday, the very first day of the week, business activities are shut down. Imo State has the worst misery index in Nigeria, about 71%. And has not been able to attract any foreign direct investment since the inception of this government. And um, so we, we, we have uh, a state that is bedeviled with everything negative, everything negative, uh, kidnapping, ritualism, assassination, terror, attacks, raping, maiming, and loss of hope. And someone comes to tell us that there is uh, economic vibrancy. What, what is the economic vibrancy? Where is that coming from? Um, so the incumbent knows that his tenure is over. Okay. Okay. Okay, buddy. Um, and I get back to uh, yeah. the Labour Party. 
Okay, Amadi, let me just ask you this. And I get back to... Okay. Yeah. Okay, if I can just butt in there. I mean, yes, you are stating uh, what the problems are, what the issues are with Imo State. But what would be important, uh, first and foremost, uh, to the delegates that will elect uh, the candidate of the party and ultimately uh, the Imo the citizens who will elect the governor will be what qualifies you, what distinguishes you as the person that will change the narrative. But my question to you in answering that uh, specifically is, are you worried that uh, the gentleman uh, who won the election before it was subturned by the Supreme Court four years ago, Emeka Edioa of the PDP, might be uh, joining the Labour Party to give another shot at the governorship election? Are you worried that the same man who won four years ago might be the one that you'll be confront, uh, confronted with to get the ticket of your party? How will that play out if it comes to Labour Party? Uh, um, His Excellency, Emeka Hedionha, yes, um, lost the mandate of the people. But right now, the Imolites do not have confidence in him being able to secure the position if it's given to him again. And so the entire mindset of Imo people is geared towards someone that can secure the mandate. And um, I believe that given what Labour Party stands for, and I can give you some background, you know, a few weeks back, Labour Party was on the verge of, um, of breaking up, you know, something came up in the party where uh, first uh, the forms, the, the gubernatorial forms were being sold for about 25 million. I did a press conference because I stand for what is true. I have a different vision of Labour Party and the, the party that is for the masses of Nigerians, the party for the obedience, the party that wants people of character, competence, to join them. And I made a press conference where I challenged the cost of that form. Today, that um, request has been used. And I still would ask, because my dream for Labour Party is different. I still would ask that the price of the form goes down. Um, and, and there are reasons for this. Labour Party should be the party where the common man who has the right leadership skill, the primary school teacher, uh, the farmer, you know, that has the, the character, the competence, the leadership qualities to lead the people who come onto the party and will not be sidelined by the cost of entry forms. I think um, Labour Party should do well by stepping out this form. For governorship, it shouldn't be more than three million naira, and presidency it shouldn't, it shouldn't be more than five million naira. Uh, the uh, Senate should, should not be more than two million naira. House of Assembly should not be more than one million naira. Uh, um, and and, and ju it just goes like that, you know, even to, to, to the local government. So that, you know, communities can be able to choose their leader. They can contribute for someone who they feel can lead them. Financial capacity should not be a yardstick to pick a leader. And, uh, and when we put that as a yardstick, then we're messing the system up. There will be delegate primaries uh, in a few days in Imo states. And I can put it to you that they're going to buy up these delegates. And the only way Labour Party can do it is to bring up something very close to Osham A4. Because Osham A4 may not be able to hold the wards uh, have submitted their registers. They have all the members of the Labour Party. The list has been submitted that I, uh, that I am aware of. If the Labour Party goes to select about 20 people from a ward, out of the 305 wards in Imo State, you have about 7,010 people going to elect 
who will be the, uh, uh, the candidate for the party, that will neutralize any vote buying. I want to put it to the leadership of the uh, Labour Party that if they go by one delegate or three delegates, the votes will be compromised. People will be bought over. Let's make it in a way that you cannot buy over these 7,010 delegates. Right. They have their party cards. The numbers are there already. So we have a system to check them. Okay. And if it goes that way, I tell you, Emo Light, Labour Party would vote for me. I will get the ticket of Labour Party. And I will give them the governance that is true because it is their mandate, it is their will that will be there. And the moment we get a ticket, I tell you, the incumbent knows something else is up. The way we stood up at the presidential election, we will stand up at the governorship election and nobody will subvert the will of Imolite. Nobody. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you so Thank you. much for, for joining Thank us, you. Chine Duamadi, Governorship Aspirant on the platform of Labour Party for the Imo State uh, Governorship Elections. Thank you for being here with us on The Morning Show.